an old model steam engine which was made circa 1896. This is part 8, selecting the type of steel to use for making a new crankshaft. This new crankshaft will be quarter of an inch in diameter and I compare the diameters of standard quarter inch silver steel, stainless steel and mild steel. And they are all slightly different in size. I will also need to enlarge the existing holes in the original bearing parts. The first two pieces of steel are magnetic, so they are either mild steel or silver steel, but by the look of it I'm pretty sure they are mild steel. One of these steel rods is a different diameter. This is to make the crank pin and it's 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and it is stainless steel because as you can see once again it is not magnetic. This one is silver steel, it is magnetic and it's precision ground. Silver steel is a special kind of steel that can be heat treated to harden it. But for this application I really don't need to do that. I selected and cut to length a piece of stainless steel and here it is in position in the bearings holding the pulley and the flywheel. I used a quarter of an inch reamer to enlarge the holes in the centre of both the flywheel and the pulley, although the pulley does need a little bit of remachining. Here's what's left of the non-magnetic stainless steel once I cut it to make the crankshaft. You may find this interesting. Silver steel is accurately ground and the micrometer tells me that it is exactly a quarter of an inch in diameter. No pluses or minuses, exactly a quarter of an inch. And to prove that it's printed on the piece of steel. Believe me, for this engine I do not need this level of precision. I bought the piece of silver steel just to show you it in the video. Here's a piece of stainless steel and it's one thousandth of an inch less than a quarter of an inch, which is not a lot really and you do need some space to let the oil in. Next in the micrometer is a piece of bright mild steel, abbreviated to BMS. And as you can see, this is two thousandths of an inch less than it should be. For the main crankshaft, I will be using stainless steel. And I will also be using a piece of three sixteenths of an inch diameter stainless steel for the crank pin. Even in its unhardened state, apparently silver steel wears better than other steels. But in this case, it really is academic. I don't think this is ever going to wear out once I've fitted it. There's a big difference between working models like steam locomotives and models that run a lot and do work and ones like this which are really sort of showpieces that you get out of the cupboard to show people periodically. Having said that, an engine of this age that is still capable of running, as you saw in episode 7, is quite remarkable but it's going to be a lot better once I've finished with it and I'm going to weather the parts down to make them fit in with the existing parts. I have a way of doing this but I won't show that until I actually start to do it. As you can see the pull is all over the place. I will actually remachine this using a length of silver steel as a mandrel in the lathe because as we all know silver steel is exactly a quarter of an inch in diameter. If you look carefully you will see that I've reamed out the main bearings and everything fits very well. Over now to my Myford ML7R lathe and I'm machining across the end of the piece I've cut off for the crankshaft. Once I've machined the end of it perfectly flat I use the centre drill to drill a tapered centre in each end of the crankshaft. This is for decorative purposes only to suggest that the crankshaft was originally turned between centres, which of course it isn't. But it looks quite good, a bit of authenticity in a small world. After I drilled the centre hole in one side, I turned it around in the chuck and did the other side, but there was already a hole there. That was lucky, it was a piece that I must have drilled at some time for a job. What I needed to do though was drill the tapered part, so I very carefully introduced the centre drill to taper the hole, as you can see here. You have to be careful when you do this, because it can chatter 
owing to the fact that the main part of the centre drill isn't actually drilling. The final job for this short crankshaft is to just clean up the edges. I don't want any sharp edges. And here it is fitted in position and it looks about right, I think. It's slightly longer than it needs to be, but that is for decorative purposes. The centre sticking out of the flywheel just makes it look better. There's quite a way to go yet before a finished crankshaft emerges. In the next episode, I'll show how I make the crank webs, or at least the milling process to make the blanks. A couple of episodes down the line from this one, there'll be quite a bit of work on the Myford ML7R lathe fitted with an independent four-jaw chuck, and this will allow me to make two accurate crank webs with the holes exactly in the right position in each of them. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.